In this lesson, we are going to see how to work with subdivisions. Subdivisions is a modifier that let us add geometry to our models, uh, smooth them out, and create much more detail than we actually created. So let's see first how it works on a cube, because this is very important. So we have a cube. All right, let's jump to solid mode. And uh, when we have a cube and add here a subdivision surface modifier, you can see that the cube becomes a sphere. This is because the surfaces are being smoothed out. We can change the number of subdivisions and this, for each subdivisions, it will mul multiply the number of uh, faces by four. All right, so it will create a much smoother surface, much cleaner result, but also much more geometry. Now, the thing is, is as, as you may be wondering, if from a cube we get a, a sphere, this is basically uncontrollable. This is not true. Let me explain you very quickly how this works. Let me just paint on top of this. So I'm going to uh, have a corner here. All right, so I have this corner, perfect. And I have these three vertices. And here I will have the same corner with the same three vertices. All right, when I smooth this surface, this is what happens. All right, basically that's what happens. It creates a curve based on that corner. The thing is that this is basically smoothing out our geometry and we can control our geometry. So this smoothing is different. So in this case, for example, if we add two extra vertices here, what will happen is this. It will come until here and the smoothing will happen between these two because these others are aligned. So that will let us create some sort of corner. All right. If you didn't understand it, don't worry because we are going to do it now. So I'm going to jump into tap mode. I'm going to press W, subdivide. This will create new geometry here. And I'm going to press, you can see how already the smoothing changed, right? So shift alt click, shift alt right click to uh, select all these, um, these uh, edge loops. And now press control B to bevel. And you can see how this, when we add this geometry, we get corners. So now instead of just a cube, we have a smooth cube. And these corners are much more realistic than the previous cube that we have. Let's create another cube so you can compare it. There we go. This one here that I'm going to also press T to show here the tools and let's click on smooth. This is much more realistic because in reality, we don't have perfect corners like in 3D. This is basically just a face attached to another face and we get a corner. But this is a realistic corner. Of course, this is a cube. It's very easy to create this geometry that I'm going to explain to you now how it works. But uh, when we are working with complex geometries, this may be a bit tricky to, to achieve. But well, we are going to see how to do it. So uh, in very advanced cases, will not be covered here because uh, I, I, I have even built a whole course with many hours of material just for creating this type of model. So it is a complex thing, but just understanding the basics will let us uh, create the object that we want for this scene and uh, it will improve your models a lot. So this is how it works. Basically, we have this geometry here. This is what we call a control loop. These are loops that control the shape of our object. And then we have these loops that are surrounding it. And these loops are called the support loops. So basically control loops define the shape. Support loops are here just to uh, allow the subdivision to work as we want. So if we delete these support loops, you can see that right now we have support loops only for other corners. So this side here is now curved. So we would like, we, we, we would want to add another loops to just create that corner. So basically a corner needs three loops, support loops, I mean the control loop and two support loops around it. That's what makes a perfect corner. Now, now that we, see that we have seen this, there are many ways in which we can create support loops. Uh, we can bevel, we can do them as I did now, we can uh, use the knife tool to cut them in place. There are many ways and it depends on the model we are building. We will see mm, many examples of these during the next videos where we are 
uh, we will be modeling the, the objects for our scene. But in this video, I'm going to model a chair. Remember the chair in the previous video? That was very, very simple. Now we're going to go a bit deeper and we're going to create a very cool chair. There's one thing we need to keep in mind before we start. In the previous chair that we modeled, it was very basic and you, can, you could see how we built everything from just one piece. But this doesn't happen in reality. When we work with high resolution models, we need to take a look at reality and how things work. So for, for creating a chair in reality, we need different pieces. We have the seat, we have the legs, we have the back, for example. Those are the, the, the main pieces that we are gonna work with now. Um, so keeping this in mind, we, we know that we need to build those same pieces and keep them separate and then uh, make them fit together. So we have to do this also in 3D. So let's start with the seat and we are going to make it uh, to keep it very simple. But I just want to show you how working with set divisions would look like. So let's just extrude this. And now this would be the a very basic seat. Let's select this and make it a bit thicker. There we go. And if we press Control 2, we add automatically a subdivision modifier in subdivision level number 2. All right. Now, I want to make this a bit more interesting. So first, I'm going to add this here, all right, with Control R. And now with Control B, I'm going to bring this up. There we go. So now we have a rounded seat, but this is not exactly what I want. I want to give this a shape. So what I'm going to do is to just create this. Now, this looks a bit more like I want it, but selecting these two loops, I'm going to press Control B to bevel them. There we go. And this way, we have prettier corners here. But now we can uh, take it a bit farther because, for example, I would like that uh, this top part here was a bit more defined. But if we add another loop here, we will also define this corner a lot more. And I don't want that. I only want to define this corner, but keeping this shape. So what I do is basically select this. And uh, here's another trick. We can press Control Shift, right click, and this will let us select a grid. Okay, so if we select this one, for example, and we select the opposite corner of the grid, Control Shift, right click, we select the whole grid. And we are going to make an inset look. Y or I, sorry. And you can see how we can define that corner very easily without adding geometry in these sides. We will do the same in the bottom part. So Control Shift, right click, I to create an inset and leave it there. That's perfect. Now let's uh, go a bit farther. Let's add two loop cuts here. So with control R, we add one loop cut, but if we move the mouse wheel, we can add more or less. Okay, so let's add two of them. There we go. Now let's go to the top view, uh, pressing seven in the numpad. And let's select the vertices and press Z in the keyboard. This will allow me to work with the uh, wireframe. So I'm going to select these two here, and I'm going to bring them out. And I'm going to also bring out these two. I'm just using the lasso selection as we saw in the previous videos. Just control, click and drag. Press G, I. And this way you can see how the this front part is now a bit curved. You can bring this like this. All right. Now I can select this and press smooth. There we go. Okay, now we need to build the legs and we need to build the back. So let's start with the legs. I'm going to select just this one here. I mean, not, not selecting anything, sorry. I'm just going to press Shift A, create a plane, press Enter or press Tab to enter into edit mode. And instead of just creating it in the corner, I'm creating it here in the center. Press Z to see the wireframe and see what's going on. And I'm going to make it smaller and I'm going to bring it here to this place. The reason I'm doing this is that once I have this leg here, I'm going to be able to uh, just turn it around and build the other four or the other three legs just because the pivot point is right in the center. I could have just the pivot point 
uh, here in one side and then just uh, use the 3D cursor from the center to rotate them around the 3D cursor. But I think this is easier. So I'm going to just start by extruding this. So extrude with E and use the Z axis to extrude. There we go. I don't know if this will be very high, very tall. So let's go there. I'm going to make it a bit smaller here at the bottom. And now from the top, I'm going to bring this out a bit, something like that. Okay. Now I'm going to add subdivisions and see how this looks like. Press Control 2 and oh, this doesn't look really well, does it? So I'm going to select everything and with A, press Control N to unify the normals so they look outside. And now is when we start, we have to start defining the shapes here. So let's start by creating one of this, right? Loop cut there and now just move it out like that. And now I'm going to press Control B and make a bevel there. So this will allow me to create a curve in this leg. Another looping here. And now selecting these four vertices at the bottom, I can bring them a bit outside. Now I may need to move things uh, a bit to adapt the shapes, but I can bring this up bring this up. Uh, keep in mind that here I press G twice. When we press G twice, we can slide a uh, loop. So you can see that, for example, if I select this loop and press G twice, I can slide it through the loops that are touching it. That's very interesting. So just going to move it up and this just move it up a bit. That's okay. Now, once I have this, I need to select the loops I want to define. Okay, so for example, let's define these loops here. Let's define also these four here. There we go. But you can see that I haven't selected the one in the inner part, only the ones outside. So I'm going to add with Control B a chamfer, a bevel there, and I'm going to add another segment. So we have three segments in this bevel. And now I'm going to press P and move this outside. So this is this is another way in which you, we can create um, support loops. So what you have seen here is very basic, but you can see how we made a curved chair that we can, of course, arrange here a bit. Um, so we can move this manually and create interesting shape so I want this to be curved in there and here at the bottom bring back you can see how the shape that we are actually creating is not really exactly the same as the one that is subdivided all right because subdivisions uh, just make everything smaller so we can just play with it until we find the shape we want but you can see that here in these three corners I have support loops so I have corners but in the inner part I have a curve and that was on purpose. I wanted to do that. So now I have something that I can use for the rest of the legs. So I can come here and I can just press Alt D, not Shift D, Shift D would duplicate it, but what I want is an instance. So I'm going to go to the top view, I'm going to press Alt D and I'm going to rotate and I'm going to rotate 90 degree. There we go. Now, as I did all of this in the same move, that means I can repeat the move. And for repeating a move, I can use Shift R and uh, use it twice. So we already have all the legs from our chair. And check this out. If I enter here,